Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Jakarta time or Indonesia time, because we have three different time zones. This is the second day of the schooling, and we have our keynote speaker for today's session here, Dr. Andresa Gomidi. Andresa. Apa kabar? Baik, Andresa. Sudah makan belum? Sudah makan. Sudah makan. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dr. Andresa Gumide speaks many different languages, and uh, yeah, one of them is uh, Malay, and we can communicate in Malay. So, if you have questions and you want to use Indonesian, that would be all right. Right, I guess. <laughs> Got some issues in Indonesian. How is the baby, Andresa? Doing fine. You might listen to some baby crying during the talk. No, but no I didn't right hear. Right now. Uh, can you hear me now? I can hear you, but I cannot hear the baby. Ah, okay, the baby, okay. <laughs> you know, right now he's sleeping, but maybe during the, the talk he's going to cry a little bit. <laughs> yes, say hi and please demonstrate how to use corpus queries. <laughs> okay. <laughs> how old is uh, the baby now? Uh, he's going to be two months on Friday. Yes. Oh, my yeah. God. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Already has a name. Uh, yes, it's called Dario. 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 Sí. Da Dario. Yeah. Dario. 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 Uh, okay. Is Dario. that a Portuguese name, Brazilian name, or it's, Italian? Uh, name? Both Italian and well, I don't know the origin, but uh, it mm. can be pronounced in Portuguese and Italian the same way. So mm. we. Yeah. Does it have a special meaning? Uh, the a person that carries good things. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So everyone uh, who has joined, welcome to the scolding. Um, so Dr. Andresa Gomide was my colleague in Lancaster. We had the same supervisor, Dr. Andrew Hardy. So it's quite high profile uh, name in um, linguistics. Yeah. So let me say hello to other participants who have joined. Um, I see some familiar names here. Pak Nur Hizbullah is my colleague from Al-Azhar University. Hello, Mas Puri. In Jakarta. Hello, Hello <laughs> Pak Nur Hizbullah. Hello, nice to see you. Nice to see you again here. I also saw you yesterday, but I didn't have the chance to greet you. Thank you for attending the second day of the schooling. 2023. Yeah, so we had little technical difficulties. So yeah, it's already past two minutes from 1500. So I think we are going to start now. Yeah, so let me hand over this session to the moderators. Good afternoon, everyone. So today we will um um we, so today we will start to this calling two thousand and twenty three day two. So in the course in the corpus linguistics uh. Okay. You will see the Dr. Andresa Rodriguez Comedy is a researcher at the Selga ELTAC -E and works in the development of, of linguistic and computational researches. For Portuguese as a fully centric language. In 2022, she completed her PhD in linguistic from Lancaster University, where she developed two tools for corpus 
researchers and specialists in computational linguistics. Recently, she has collaborated on the following projects, such as DIPOMO, which is focused on the creations of the Mozambican Portuguese Dictionary. It is common specific scientific and technical terminologies, or TCTC, which has as its global objective the creations and public availability of scientific and technical terminologies for the countries of the community of Portuguese-speaking countries, which is corpus of Portuguese as a plurian-centric language, CPLP, a written corpus of Portuguese or Portuguese and its varieties. As you can see on the screen, it is the CV of Dr. Andresa Rodriguez. So, Dr. Andresa Rodriguez, um, are you audible? Are you here, doctor? Yes, yes, I can hear. So, Andresa? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, Andresa, we okay. can hear you. Yeah. Okay. So, our moderator has read your CV, uh, but there is one more information that Andresa is one of the admins of Sigbe Web Lancaster. Uh, the, uh, web application that we are going to use today. Okay, okay Andresa, over yes. to you. Uh, moderator, yes. you can stop sharing your screen and let Dr. Andresa go with uh, share yes. screen. Okay, thank you, Papri. Thank you for the presentation. Thanks, Pri, thanks, uh, Rosanna. Um, so today I'm gonna be talking about uh, how to some corpus curious techniques. I saw that uh, Robbie Love yesterday gave an amazing introduction to corpus linguistics, so I take that everybody now it's already an expert and I don't have to go to the introduction of corpus linguistics, right? But please, uh, if I go too fast, so if you have any question, please feel free to, to interrupt me and, and ask some questions. Um, you can see my screen, right? Yes, you can see your screen, Doctor. Okay. Great. Um, so the idea for today is that um, I'm going to be talking, even if the, the topic is corpus query techniques, I thought it would be a good idea to talk a bit about corpus creation as well, because without knowing how a corpus is created, it's a bit harder to understand how we can query, how we can search things in a corpus. So the idea is to have this introduction to how, to how a corpus is created, how a corpus is formatted and then how we put the layers of information in a corpus. And then once we have this overview of how a corpus is, is formed, then we are gonna start the, some basic techniques of how to search, how to query a corpus uh, using CKP web that I assume that everybody already has a login and everything is working. Um, okay, so to start creating a corpus, as uh, you might know, we, we need texts. So the starting point of our corpus is that we have a lot of texts and information on the text that we can put together. Normally, what we have is um, this kind of text come in different formats. It can be PDF, it can be uh, Microsoft Word documents, it can be HTML or text, I mean, text from the internet, it can be plain text. Usually have a lot of different kinds of sources. We get those texts, we process them in a way that we have them as a plain text or here indicated as a, a, a TXT file. So that means that we remove all the unnecessary things in a text, like we don't have uh, colors, we don't have um, bold, uh, italic, like for format. Um, if it's PDF, you usually also transform images uh, into text. And, okay, sorry. Um, just just reading the messages here. Uh, so we get this uh, this files that we have this text and then we transform Form it to plain text. So that would be the TXT. That is already one step that we do corpus analysis, and that would be already enough to do analysis using tools like Lunx Box 
or end conch that you just have the text. But normally what we also want, especially when we have a large corpus with different texts, is to have the metadata or many the, the information on the texts that we have in a corpus. So normally in a, when we're preparing a corpus, especially for CKP Web, what we have is the text, each individual text that compose a corpus on one side, and in another side we have uh, a table containing the information of each individual text, which can be saved as a um, Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so just to demonstrate here, it's uh, in Portuguese. It's an, one example in Portuguese, but I guess it should be okay. Imagine that we have we want to create a corpus of scientific articles, and that is the original file. It's a screenshot of a PDF. We have the titles in bold, um, with different type fonts, uh, some lines between between each section, and uh, we want to transform it in a way that my corpus to is going to read it. So what I do is convert this PDF into a plain text, which means just a file, just the text. As you can see here, I have just the title uh, and the contact of the text in the same size. There's no different colors. The only colors you, you see here is just the two that make the structure appear. So we have the text that starts, the title, uh, when the abstract start and when the abstract finish, when the keywords start and when the keywords finish. Um, yep. So here you have the beginning showing that the text is started, the title, the abstract here, and uh, the keywords. So you can see that the starting process is already different from what uh, we had as a, the PDF file. So that's one step. We, we get the text, add some items that here uh, is just, you don't have to worry about it, but it's called the accept now tags, just to indicate when something starts and when, some, when something finish. And that's one part of the process. But then as linguists, we also want to have information about the, the each token that we have, um, the parts of speech or um, the lemma of each word. So um, the third step that we do is to convert that text we have reading in line, like normal as we read, we convert it to a vertical format. I swear it's gonna make sense what I'm saying now when we demonstrate in CKP Web. So after we have the line, we read the text in horizontal line, but to give this information to CKP Web, we convert it to a vertical, uh, vertical format. So what it means, instead of reading it as a line, we are gonna read it now as columns. So each, each word or each token in our corpus is gonna be in one, one line. And then here you can imagine like some columns, imaginary columns that for each uh, token, each word that I have, I'm going to give, be giving different layers of information, which normally is the tagging, as we call the tagging of the text. At the same time, at the same time we have this, we, for each text we're going to have an ID and in an Excel spreadsheet, for example, on a table, we are going to store all the information that we want about this text. So I have the ID of the text, and then I can keep adding columns like the title of the text that I have, the, um, the name of the author, when the, the text was published, how many words I have in this text, uh, what is the source, all the metadata of the corpus. So here, just to, uh, I know it's on a bit confusing everything that I said, so just to exemplify, uh, all this process of get the text, convert, uh, put information as when it starts one section, when it finishes another section, and add information like parts of uh, parts of speech. Just a simple text to exemplify what we normally do to create a corpus. So I get a book. So here, let's say I got this book. Uh, it was the book is called "It Was a Dark and Stormy Night." It was written by Snoopy. It was uh, in PDF. I get this book, converts to plain text. And here's one example of the first sentence that I have. It was a dark and stormy night. That's how we use as readers of a book read. But to create, to put it in a corpus, we convert this sentence into a vertical format, like here in this table. So here we have it as a token. It's each word saved as a token. So we have it was a dark night. And for each token, we can keep giving columns, meaning add uh, annotation to annotation to the table. For example, um, here it, it's the token, the lemma is it because it doesn't change and the part of speech is a pronoun. 
was the verb, so part of speech verb, and the lemma is B. Uh, meaning that if I want to, um, meaning that, yeah, if I want to search later the corpus for all different formats of the verb to be, I can use this lemma B and I'm going to find was, were, am, is. So I have all this information. On top of the information about the word itself, we also add this information here that we call XML tags that indicates boundaries, limits in the text. So it was a dark and stormy night, it's a sentence. I can use this little S, uh, this um, sentence boundary here that we use the letter S to, to indicate when the sentence starts. So here it starts uh, it and when it finish. So I have this backslash here indicating that the, the sentence finish. Here I showed example just with a sentence, but we could add different information as paragraph or text uh, section or foreign language, for example. This is one step. And the other one here below, we have the metadata. So for each text that I add to my corpus, I'm going to have a, a unique text ID. So, um, so we have the, the text idea here, the title, the author, the year, and I could give as many information um, as I could, as I wanted. So far, is everything OK? Am I going too fast? It's all right, Andresa. You can sit right. your coffee if you want. We have I don't know if hours. I'm going to have no worries. coffee. <laughs> I don't know if I want okay, to some tea. coffee here because it's, just... it's extremely hot. I feel like I'm okay. in Indonesia. It's 40 degrees now. So, so I see, perhaps. <laughs> I see it yeah. would be good. I see it would be good. Um, okay. Yeah, okay, you can so, proceed. So yeah. OK, great. Um, OK, um, I don't know how we are 70, 70 people, right? But it's OK if we have a, a conversation as well, if I make some questions and then we interact just for discussion. Sure, sure, sure no worries. Okay. OK, great. So I hope that so far everything was uh, made a little bit of sense, the idea of having the structure and the annotation. I know that many of you just want to search a corpus. You don't want to, to create, create one, I imagine. But then. Uh, when you're searching or creating a corpus, there are some questions as, uh, as linguists that it's interesting to, to have in mind when you're preparing or even when you're searching a corpus. Uh, it's that like which words or expressions of part of speech would we expect to frequently find in, for example, the conclusion of, of a section or of an academic article or a teenager speech or in the beginning of a sentence? Let me rephrase the sentence. Um, when we have a whole corpus, is it um, when you're doing the analysis, do you think that the frequency of some specific expressions are going to be concentrated in, in the beginning or in the middle of the text or the end? Or if we have a corpus of spoken language, for example, if we have a speaker that it's an, a teenager and if we have a speaker that it's an elderly person, are those words going to be very different? Do, are they going to use different expressions, different parts of speech? Um, for my research, would it be interesting to, to analyze just the words that come in the beginning of a sentence or that comes at the end of a sentence? Um, that's just the first question. What do you have in mind for, the, for those questions? Does anybody want to share? You can also write your answers in the chat box if you want. Let's say you have a problem on your mic. I think that will be all right, Andresa. OK. It's... Yeah, feel free to open your mic. This is an interactive session. You don't need to wait until the Q&A. You can also write the answers or what you want to ask in the chat box. One message from Nugraha, I think, based on research questions we want to answer. And from Luciana in teenager speech, we call expect quotation. Yeah. Like a lot. True. Mm. Yeah, if you have a corpus with fiction also, what kind of boundaries would be interesting? Slangs. Good. 
Yeah, so here are a lot of different questions. If we have a, okay, so if we have a fiction, what kind of um, information would we want to have in this fiction? Would you want to to set separate the, the speech of each character, for example? Or for a teenager, there's a lot of, um, a lot of uh, quotation marks, a lot of contractions. How do we deal with those contractions? Or slangs, yes, what do we do if slangs, uh, do they, are they considered a token if they come in a different language? Um, yeah, so we have many different expressions, many different structures in a text. And depending on our research question, it might be useful to, to know how to search for this, these words. So for example, uh, someone said slangs. Maybe I'm studying the use of slang. Would it be useful to add an information for, in my corpus for each time I see a slang, where it starts, uh, if it's a slang in a foreign language, if it's a slang that it's outdated, if, meaning that people don't use it anymore, if it's a slang that it's, has just emerged, so just young people use it. All these questions we, we might consider when we're creating a corpus and searching. And then the second question leads to, uh, deals with similar answers that you gave, like what should be counted as a token? So the teenager, you're gonna go far. Uh, what should I consider here a token? Uh, yours, is it just one word or should I break it in two? Gonna, should I break it um, in going to? Or should I consider it con? And I'm making all those questions and I really don't have the answer because it always depends on your research question. Maybe you want to consider gone as a token. Maybe you want to, to be able to search and know uh, exactly where you have going to and when you have gone. Um, also, when you're transcribing, imagine you have a um, um, spoken corpus. You heard someone saying when you're transcri transcribing, but one, one word you couldn't listen or, or you couldn't read. So when you put this information, should it be considered a token in your corpus or not exactly? Or when you have foreign words, like he said, hasta la vista. Hasta la vista, it's not English, but should it be inserted in, in, my, in my word count? Or when I'm looking for, when I'm searching words in my corpus, is it important that I know how to search exactly where I have the occurrence of foreign languages? First time I heard hasta la vista is from Terminator. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, we could also add to this information. You can say hey, like a, it's a quotation coming from a film because I don't know, maybe in your research, it might be useful to see how many times people cite quotes from films. Okay, so all of this question is just to, to arrive to the point that yes, we as linguists, we want to know when things started, when things finish in a text. We want to have as much information as possible. And I started here with one example from um, the BNC, the spoken BNC of 2014, which you should have access uh, through CKP Web Lancaster. And just to show the behind the scenes and things, hopefully things are going to start making more sense, why I was talking about all this construction of corpus. So for yesterday, if I'm not mistaken, you had already had some experience with the searches in CKP Web. I look for the expression, oh, that's nice, in the BNC 2014, spoken BNC. And I had those concordance lines here with some, some occurrences. And here we can see this number, um, number letter S0095, that indicates a speaker. So the BNC 2014 is the corpus of spoken language and we have information about all the speakers there, when the sentences start and when the sentence finish. Uh, this sentence, oh, that's nice, in the vertical form that I was showing, for when we prepare the corpus, we have this kind of information. Each line here, we have a word. So, oh, it's a word with the uh, um, lemma called, oh, if the, uh, parts of speech interjection and a semantic tag of Z4. Have all those expressions here. Um, ah, thanks, Pri. And um, I have all those informations of each word or each token and extra information as well. I know that this, oh, that's nice, was unclear. It was not said uh, in a way that the transcriber was absolutely sure that he 
heard this part. I know that the speaker is the number 0095. I know that there is no overlap, meaning that the speakers were not speaking at the same time. And I have all this information here. Um, okay, so all this is structure, all this um, information that I gave here was to show how we are gonna do the search in the corpus. So far, is everything okay? Any questions? Any question, participants? Or maybe they just can't wait to do the queries and keep it wet, maybe. The queries. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, so let's start doing that right now. Uh, I saw that Pri just gave you access to, to the BNC yes. corpus, right? So yeah. here in the previous slide, they showed the spoken BSC, but now we are gonna be working with the BNC 1994 that has spoken and, and sorry, let me, I just changed the way I was sharing the screen. Okay. You can see. So we are seeing uh, BNC XML. Okay. Yeah, not BNC, spoken BNC. Okay, so you're, yep. Yeah, I think it's on the next tab, on the uh, previous tab, I think. Yeah, no, no, in yeah, the no, previous no. slide, we worked with the spoken one, which was mm. this one. Okay. But now we're gonna work with the, um, the written BNC. Uh, Pri, I'm not sure. Everybody's familiar, right, with the searches of with CKP Web or? Uh, not everyone. So some people okay. have absolutely zero knowledge, I okay. think, on so. CKP Web. So maybe start from the beginning. Okay, uh, Roby so. has briefly explained CKP Web, but he concentrated on research questions like corpus linguistic. So maybe start from the beginning, uh, like doing login and then choosing corpus, etc. So. No, he started, I should start from that. No, he started yesterday, but okay. very briefly. So maybe okay. you can repeat for one or two okay. minutes. I can skip the login part to then. Uh, ah, okay. Yeah. Well, we can, I'll go since the beginning then with the login part. <laughs> um... So the instruction okay. on how to log into CKP Web has also been provided in the uh, short manual that I gave to all participants. So you can also check your emails actually if you uh, want to know how to log in. But okay. unless I will quickly just quickly demonstrate yeah. how to log in. Okay, so just check the website cqpweb.lunks.ac.uk that Pri has just sent. Use the username uh, and password. Yep. You're still sharing uh, GNC. Ah, okay. Yeah, so maybe. You have two screens, perhaps, or you are sharing application. This one is... mm. Okay. Now, yes, yeah, right? This one. Yes, okay. we are seeing uh, the interface now. Okay. So when you, that, that's the landing page of CQP Web. So you're going to see enter your username and enter your password. So you just um, write your username and your password. You can click on stay logged so you don't have to log in many times. Log in. And that's the, the main page of CQP Web. So here, no, sorry. So here on the bottom, you have about CQP Web, CQP Web main menu, and then you can see all the all the websites you have access to. Oh, sorry, all the corporate you have access to. Um, if you click here, view your own corpus of access privileges. Sorry. So here you can see all the the corporate available. If you have full access to the corpus, that means you can even download the corpus. If you have no normal access you can normally access without being able to download the corpus. And restricted, you can see only some words in the concordance lines. We are gonna be working with the BNC, which you have normal access to it. If I go back here, have um, present day English, 
we are going to be working now with the uh, British National Corpus XML edition. It's this one here. You click on it, and then you have the page of the corpus you're going to search. So this pink one, everybody should have in your screen if you're accessing it. It's the British National Corpus. Here, for standard queries, the easiest queries you can, you can have, we just type it here in the box and hit Start Query. So for example, if I want to look for the word, I don't know, love, I type, and then I have all the occurrences. So in this corpus that has um, uh, more than 100,000 words, we have more than 20,000 occurrences of the word love. We have the sentence where this um, word occur, and then we have the ID of each text that we have here. So far, so good. Yep. OK, so we just look for the word like that. But imagine that we I don't want to to look only for the word love. I want to see the occurrences of loves, loving, loved. So what can I do? We can use something called the wildcard or star or asterisk. So I type here love and I put this star, this white card, hit start query again. And then I can see that I have all the occurrences that start with love. So that starts actually telling me, um, okay, I want the word that starts with L-O-V and everything to the right, it's optional. It can, can come with three letters, four letters or yeah, even low poem. And yeah. Another thing we can do is, um, for example, if I'm looking for the verb sing, and, ah, oh, thanks, Pri. And I want to, the words to be in the past, in the present, in the future, like sing, sang, sung. What I can do is instead of writing the letter I, I just write the question mark. If I put the question mark and I put start query, I'm going to have all the examples of the word that starts with S, has any kind of letter after S, and finish in NG. So instead of me saying I'm just giving, I'm going to ask a question. Um, you can go on Web BNC and type star, search and start in the box and click start. Look at the concordance lines and tell me what you think about the results. What is the, the star doing? So I come here, I'm just right checking. Certain. Has anyone has any problem? Does anyone has any problem with the CQB web user account that I created? So unless I created that uh, user account. Okay. And yeah, it is used by everyone. I use this in this method in many trainings. Yeah. Uh, and there, there was no problem. There was actually a problem when they want to upload the corpus because the system seems to get confused. Okay. But but you're not going to do that now, so I think that that will be it will be all right if it is just for browsing. Okay, so from Asma and Nugraha, it's all good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Andrew. Oh, it's Andresa, not Andrew. Andrew is our <laughs> supervisor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mentioned yeah. Andrew several times. So Dr. Andrew Hardy uh, was our <laughs> no supervisor. <problem>. <laughs> Okay, so Andresa, it's, there's a question from Yusreya in the chat box. I cannot find uh, a specific tab you're working with. Okay, so let me go back here. Um, Yusreya, you go, okay, so there are two ways of accessing the corpus. You, either you go to the main page of CKP Web, which is this one, or um, we can go straight to the link. So Priya, I think you have sent the link for the corpus, right? Yes. I'll send, I'll send here again, just in case. So that's the, the specific link for the corpus. So each corpus in CQP Web has um, 
a specific link. So normally what you have is cqweb.lungs.ac.uk slash, and then the name after is the name of the corpus. So as you can see, the one that I sent is the BNC XML web. You just click it there, and then you're going to come to this page where you have the standard query. Yep. Okay. Um, so what I did with the search is just what I'm telling the computer, what I'm telling CQP Web is that I want to look for a word that begins with anything, ends with anything, but in the middle, I have the word certain. So here I have certain, certainly, uncertainties. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what I have. Um, and another, let me just think, okay. Um, another query that I can do is, as I said, the thing, or for example, imagine the corpus is written in American English and British English, and I want to look for gray with A, or I want to look for gray with E. Instead of writing two words, what I can do is I just put the, the question mark there, and CQP Web is going to return to me everything that starts with GR and ends in Y and has one letter or any letter um, in the middle. To make things easier, going back here to the page, if, uh, next to simple query, I have this link here saying simple query language syntax. If you click on it, you're gonna have a link with a whole manual of how to use these special words, this, these techniques that makes our search much, much easier. So for example, here, what I show, the question mark we use for single arbitrary character. So what does it mean? That I want to look for this word, but this character here, the second one, it can be anything. So when we use the question mark, what, you're gonna, what we're actually saying is, this character can be anything uh, possible in the corpus. Now, the star, it means zero or more characters. So it can be a character or it can be zero character. The difference between the question mark and the star is that this, the question mark, I need to have one character. It can be any. It's like a, a joker. When, if you play cards, it would be like a consider a joker. It plays something, uh, but it can be anything. And yeah, so here we have a tiny, a tiny guide on it. Um, ah, if the file that I'm sharing, it's actually here in CQP Web. I just click it here. In this link, simple query language syntax. Um, you click on this link and then it opens uh, to the side. Let me send the link straight. That's the link for the manual. That gives you all the, the possibility of how to how to do the searches. Um, I don't know how many of you work with language teaching of, or um, what is the main research, but here's just showing one example that of application that we can do with this question mark is, for example, we are just teaching a student about uh, antonyms of the opposite of, of the words. What we can do is this exercise of getting some of words like appropriate, certain, conscious, and use the wildcard so the, the student can go there and find the opposite of the word. So for example, uh, I don't know what's the, the opposite of mature and I want to search in my corpus. So I just go, I write the word mature. I know that to say opposite in English, probably I'm gonna have something before. So I just put the wildcard meaning, okay, I don't know if it's immature, dismature, unmature. I put the wildcard there, I hit start query. And then I have some words that connect. So for example, here, by searching the corpus, I see that the opposite of mature, it's immature. So it's just some tri some, some techniques if, if you want to use as the corpus to teach language, the wildcard come in handy to, to, to do these kind of things. Um, okay, so that was the use of question mark and asterisk just to complete the word, but we can do much more. We can also look for, search for a word with a specific part of speech. So for example, the word like can have many different um, 
classification, like um, like it can be a verb, like it can be also a noun. Um, so how are you gonna tell the corpus? I want to look for this word with the specific with the specific function. So I click here, new query to start something new, and I type the word that I want. So okay, let's let's look for like. If I type like and hit start. When you're searching on CQP Web, if you hover over words, you're gonna see the, the parts of speech. I don't know if you can see it. Um, that like here, you have the tag PRP. Like here in the sentence, I would like to be a, an ACET, ACET. Uh, the like is a verb. So I don't know if I can make it this bigger. Let me click here and show tags. Okay, so remember in the beginning what I was saying about the vertical format that we have one word per line and the classifications. That's what's happening here. For each word that I have in a corpus like would, like, be, I have a, associated to it a tag. So this underscore connects the tag, the information of the words to it. So here I know that like has a tag VVI. Of course, you don't have to memorize the what these tags stand for, but normally if it starts with V, it means that it's a verb. So like here is tagged as a verb. The verb to be here is tag, tagged as a verb. The colon here, it's tagged as a punctuation. Pun means punctuation. So going back, let's say that I want to, to look for a word and I want it to be a specific uh, part of speech. So let's say love, I want it to be a noun. I don't want to, to look for the verb to, to the verb love, but I want to look for the love noun. What I can do is just I put this underscore, meaning that I'm attached the tag to it, and that stands for noun. And remember the star of the the wild card, meaning that it can be any type of noun. It can be a proper noun, a, a single noun, a noun plural. I hit start, and I have now all the occurrences of love as a noun. So here you can see love return as a noun return 14,000 uh, occurrences. If I do the same with V, I'm gonna have love as a verb. You can see that the occurrences, it's a bit different. So in the corpus, I have many more occurrences of love as a noun than love as a verb. All this information is here in matching parts of speech. So normally what we do is normally no, what we always do is we put the underscore to find the to identify to tell CGP Web that we want to look for this word that has this specific um, class um, this specific parts of speech. Uh, Okay. So we do that if you're looking for specific parts of speech, but we can also look for lemma. Lemma meaning um, the word and its uh, different forms that it can take. So for example, if I want to look for the verb to be, but I want to to look for is, are, was, were, what I can tell CQP Web is that I want to look for the lemma to indicate that I want to look for all the different forms. I use the curly brackets. So for example, here, I look for B. You can try doing it on the screen. And I'm gonna have the occurrences of all different forms of the verb to be here. What is aid is how is infection transmitted? People are rejected by family and friends. Uh, and I can see all the different occurrences of the verb to be. I can do the same with adjectives, for example. So if I want to look for far, but I also want to look for further, I just do the same, put the, the adjective I want in curly brackets and I have all the different forms, far, further, further, further. And I can use the combination of lemma 
with parts of speech. So for example, I want to look for the um, word light, and I want to look for the lemma, all the different variations that light has. Use the curly brackets to look for lemma. And I have light, lighter, lit. So here I have both the verb, fully lit, but I also have the adjective, lighter ones. So imagine I want to specify that I don't want the, the light as a noun and light as a verb. I want to look for, for light and its lemma, but only as a verb. So what I can do is I use the curly bracket, which means lemma slash and V that stands for verb. So with the search here, what I'm telling CQP app to, to give me is I want all the different forms that you have for, for the verb light. So I have light, lit, light, he lights, lighting down. So far, does it make sense? Questions? Is it too complicated? Okay, good question. What about modal verb? Um, we can search, like if you want to look for all the modal verbs or a specific modal. So for example, okay, I know that <coughs> should is a modal verb. Looking for should, if I hover over the verb, the word here, I see, yeah, that the tag for should for the modal verb is VM0. I don't know if you can see that. So VM0. So I can go back, make a search of any words that has the tag VM0. So what I'm telling CQP Web here is that I want any words. Remember that the star means anything. The underscore means I want uh, parts of speech that is equal to VM0, and then I search. And then I'm gonna have an occurrence, uh, I'm gonna have occurrences of all the modal verbs I have in CQP Web. Can, will, would, should, may. If I want to look for, okay. Um, if you want to look for multiple word expressions, CQP Web here, we can just write hasta la vista. I don't think that the corpus will have, but we can check. La vista. Ah, yes, we do have it. So I can we can simply type the way that the question is, the, the, the sentence is, and we can find it. Can we look for collocations? Yes, but I think that's gonna be covered tomorrow. Uh, we don't search exactly for the collocation, but we search for the, the node, the word, and then here, we choose action and look for collocations, which I think it's gonna be done tomorrow. So uh, it's a, a different step. Okay, both tall men. Okay, so let's do the search together. I want to look for, um, if I want to look for the specific sentence, bold, tall men, I just type it and I search for it. There is no result. But if I want to know, for example, I want an adjective, I want men, the word man, but preceded by an adjective. So what I can do is remember underscore is to put the tag. Adjective, here I think it's gonna be a something. So let's go slowly here. What I'm saying is that I want a word, any word, remember that the star means any with the tag, so underscore is the tag, that starts with a, let me just double check, what is the tag for hep, for adjective? Okay, the tag for adjective, it starts with a, j. So let me go slowly here. Okay, so we want to look for 
adjectives that come before a man. So we know that the tag for adjective is AJ something. I don't know what is the something, so I use the star, which means anything. AJ is zero. Thanks, Omaira. Um, I wanted any word, so I put the star, which means any word. The underscore means that I want to attach the tag to the word, and then I search. Just, I don't know if you can hear that cry in the back, <laughs> in the background. Okay, so what my search returns is all the occurrences that I have of men preceded by an adjective. So I have young man, old man, celebrated man, thirsty man, holy man, and yeah. So I could also do some search like that with uh, collocations, which you're going to see, I think, tomorrow. But if you want a more straightforward way of just looking for a word that immediately precedes the, the word you want, you can just do that. Does it make sense? Uh, the example that, okay, great. The, the example that Yusreya gave was bold, tall man. So if I want to look for men preceded by two adjectives, I can just copy this with space, which means I want one adjective followed by another adjective followed by men. I start, and then I have happy gay men, scholarly young men, good old men, Muslim holy men, sensitive young men. And yeah, now imagine if I want two adjectives and men I want in plural or singular. So I would want men with A or with E. What I can do is instead of writing both, I use the question mark. Remember that the question mark means uh, any letter, but the letter has to be there. So if I put that, please wait. Yes, then I'm gonna have singular or plural. Uh, what about searching specific verb categories? Okay, uh, that's a good question. If I want to, to search for cognitive verbs, such as think. Uh, if your corpus is prepared, meaning if your corpus has the tag um, saying which words, uh, which verbs you want, like this, uh, what you call cognitive verbs, if your corpus is prepared like that, then we can um, specify this tag. So like we use with the modal verb, we had a specific verb, the specific tag for modal verb, and we look for it. Um, it really depends on how the corpus is, is prepared. Um, another alternative you, you can do is that if you have a list of all the verbs, you can just write it. Uh, so, for example, I'm looking for think and um, imagine, for example. Okay. So, what I can do is I use the parentheses and the pipe to add new words. So, what I'm saying is that look for all these words here. Um, it can be think or it can be imagine. Let me copy here. So by using the parentheses and the pipe, this straight bar, I'm telling CQP Web that it can be any of those words that I'm looking for. So it could be think, imagine, think, imagine. Uh, I have created my own corpus. How can I insert this tag in, into my corpus? Um, it depends on which tool you're using. Um, Pri, do you want to help me with this question? <laughs> Uh, okay, so question is from oh, Asma. Yeah. Hello, Asma. What about searching specific verbs, categories, cognitive verbs, such as think? Well, it depends on whether the corpus is pre annotated or not. So, Andresa asks you whether you have prepared the corpus. So, there are some annotation methods which are quite difficult to implement automatically. Okay, and people annotate this manually. Uh, so, tags like what Andres I have presented earlier in the beginning, like part of speech tagging and lemma tagging can be done automatically. Uh, so there are many uh, software uh, for English particularly, which can do that task automatically. As for uh, your question, Asma, so this is a kind of specific annotations and typically 
people free annotate their own corpus, and then you can give the corpus to Andresa, and Andresa will upload the corpus to CKB Web, and then you can search the corpus. So another method to do this is by using existing software, but perhaps which has similar capabilities. So Asma, uh, can you hear me, Asma? Okay, anyway, so um, some of my students, they use uh, UAM. I'm going to type here. So UAM Corpus Tools. So it can implement SFL annotation. So you can find mental verbs, uh, material verbs, and uh, nouns annotated as circumstance or actor or patient, etc. So yeah, you can use that software. So, so one of my students are working with me to uh, convert the output of that software so that it can be indexed automatically to security web because using that software, you have tools, you cannot um, annotate corpus in a large scale, okay? So what people have to do is that they have to cut their corpus quite small and then upload it to uh, the, the corpus so we have corpus tool. Yeah, so yeah, my students created, we are creating a software to convert the output automatically so that it can be readable um, in CKP web. Later, maybe, maybe we can, in the future, I will be in close contact with Andrew and Andresa to create a plugin. Uh, I don't know, we can save that for, for the research. Yeah. Yeah, as one other such thing. Thank you so much, Free. <laughs> thank you so much, Free. Yeah, I just wanted the yeah, thanks. You gave the, the perfect answer because there's so many different ways of uh, creating the, the, the corpus that you want. As you said, you're using Sketch Engine. One alternative to it would be to, if you don't have many verbs with this with this case, would be to add an XML tag for each of the specific verbs you're looking for. So instead of having a tag, as we search here, you would have something called XML tag that you can find in the in a manual in Sketch Engine that you could do manually if the corpus is not that big. So that would be a possibility as well. Um, okay. Yeah, tag end may be useful for tagging. Yes, tag end. Uh, it's uh, thanks, Liliana. It's a very good tool also to to do the automatic tagging. Okay, so we did the lemma, and uh, these examples that we had was to work with the simple query language. Um, I don't know how simple it was, but that's the simple way of searching for specific constructions using CKeep Web. But if you go back here to the searching uh, box, you're going to see that we have uh, a query mode. We have the simple query. And remember, to access the cheat sheet, the, the one that I sent the link, the instructions on how to use the question mark, the asterisk, you just click here in simple query language. And you have this manual, very simple to use, only six pages. And it works well for lots of searches. But if you want to do much more advanced searches, you can click here on this drop down uh, bar and look for CQP syntax. When you click on that, you're going to see that on your CQP web, um, all this information below here appears, which is one called P attributes and the other one called S attributes in the corpus. The P attributes, a positional attribute, is actually telling you what are the tags you have for each individual word in your corpus. So for a corpus, we, all, we always have the words that compose the, the corpus. And for this one, we have the extra layers of information that is uh, parts of speech. So we know if it's a verb, if it's a noun. We have the other layer, another layer of information that it's lemma. So for example, if you have the, the verb is, I know that it's, um, the dilemma would be B. And yeah, so this two here is just an extra information, but basically we have the parts of speech and the tags. And then we have the S attribute, which actually it's not connected to a token itself, to a word itself, but to, sorry, but to a structure 
to the beginning and the end of uh, a content in the text. So this CQP syntax that if you scroll down to the bottom, here you're going to see another link, open the full CQP syntax tutorial. You have this manual that it's quite long. I think it's, if you download the PDF, I think it's like a hundred pages with the instructions of how to, to do the search. You can click, yeah, you have the PDF or you have the, the online version of it. So it's quite a long manual, it takes a while to get familiar with the syntax. Um, to be honest, you never memorize all the things, you always need to have this open so you check uh, how to, to do the search. It's a long manual, but it allows you to do specific searches. So for example, um, let's say I want to work to look for the words. Remember the first example we gave sing. I have the word sing, but I don't want to look for um, only sing. I want to look for sing and sang. So what I can do is I can say I want to look for sing and I want to look for sang. So what I'm telling the computer here now is that look for a word, look for a word that starts with the letter S, that finishes with the letter N, the letters N, G, and in between I have either the letter I or the letter A. I look for this and then I start query and I have sing, sang, Sing sang. So that search here that I gave with the CQP syntax, I could also do the sim simple query instead of having to type bracket, word, equal, and all of this. With the simple query, I could simply simple query, I could simply type S, start with S, finish with an NG, and in the middle it's I or A. Start. Mm. Yes, I, or you can just use the question mark that would lead me to song, sang, sing. So there are these two different ways of searching, which can be the simple or it can be the, the complex one. Both of them work fine, depends on the research questions you, you have. If you want to do some complex searches, then definitely I recommend using the CQP syntax that allows you to be more precise in your search. If you want to look for a simple search, for example, I want to look for the lamb of love as a verb, I just use a simple syntax. So here, for example, if I want to look for sing, as I said, the simple syntax, I just have to put the question mark. But if I want to use the CQP syntax, I have to specify that I'm looking for the words rather than the lemma and put all the letters here. Or for example, if I want to look for the love with the tag verb in the, in the advanced syntax, in the CQP, CQP syntax, I have to put love and uh, parts of speech verb. And I can also look for search for metadata, meaning that I want the user to start at this point and finish at that point. We won't have time to look for the whole syntax, but my suggestions is whoever wants to learn more about it, I definitely recommend going through this link here that remember, just click CQP syntax, click here on open the full syntax tutorial and this page will open. I'll just copy the link here. I'm sorry, not this one. Can we make a corpus of other language like Urdu or push into it? Yes, we can. Um, is it possible to look for it? Uh, it depends on how the corpus is prepared. We can. If the corpus has this information on it, then yes, we could look for how it was cited and or not. But it really depends on how the, the corpus is, is prepared. Um, here's just some suggestions if you want to do some advanced searches. 
on. Yes, maybe it would be interesting if you want to copy this text here. Let me and look for the advanced searches on CQP web for the BNC. And then you can see what this query is really doing, the advanced one. And, and yes, was a bit confusing, but does it, did it make a little bit of sense of how to use it? Did I make it things more complicated than easier? Ah, thanks. Okay, can I um, can you please share the slide with us after the session? Yes, I will. Um, can we make a corpus of other language like Urdu? Yes, Umayra, thank you so much. There are three existing one. Uh, Umayra, do you mind just uh, telling me the name, which one, so I can also share it here? Hi, Andresa. If, Hi. You, if you go to the South Asian languages here, okay. uh, Emily Urdu, Emily C I I L in the middle row, second, third part. Okay. This is one. Then if you come down, uh, there is Urdu uh, Lancaster, Urdu Web Corpus. And if you come uh, to the very last row, Charles University Urdu Monolingual Focus. These are okay. three Urdu Corpora available on the CQP web. And there are two Punjabi Corpora. One is in uh, Shamukhi and one is in Gurmukhi. That is for the in uh, Indian as well as uh, Urdu speaking communities. Uh, there are two different scripts. So there is ample of things over here. Yes, there is no Pashto uh, corpora available yet. And if you want to, then you can uh, compile one, Ijaz. You can talk to me, I'll guide you. Okay. Thank you so much, Mayra. Welcome. Asma, could I, couldn't access the international Corpus of Learning English. I don't think it's available for, I think it's available only for Lancaster users. Let me check. Uh, um, sorry, Andresa. Is that yeah. IGNALI, International Corpus of Learning English? So that corpus, I think I, yeah, it's IGNALI. If it is IGNALI, ah, it's not I, index, equal. I index that corpus. Is it IGNALI or International Corpus of Learning English? Because I index yes. it, yeah. So it's not Ignali, yeah. Because for Ignali, it's open access because I index that corpus and make it open for everyone to access. Yeah, no. I think the eco there's some issues because you have to 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 pay for it. So I don't think it's going to be available. Mm. Um. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Arabic one, yes. I uh, don't remember the name, but I'm sure there is one. Um. Let me. No. Yes, there are six of them. You typed raw text. Bangla. Mm. Mm. Not sure, Pri, do you know? Bangladesh, uh, not, that I'm, not that I'm aware of. Uh, what's the language? Bangla? So this is different language from Urdu, right? I think it's different. It's different, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not aware 
of this corpus. But if you have the, the data set that you want to have it indexed to CKP web, so maybe you can uh, give the corpus to me or Andresa, and then we can help you index the corpus in CKP web if you want. Bangla. Is that using certain script like Urdu or is it using Roman uh, characters? You can just open your mic if you want to be quick. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, actually, Bangla has its own alphabet. It doesn't mm. use Roman. It doesn't mm. use Udru script, even not Hindi script. It has oh, uh, okay. a separate script. Yes, we have uh, 59 alphabets to write Bangla. Mm. <laughs> mm, yeah. yeah. If, if the size of the corpus is less than 3 million tokens, you can upload the corpus uh, by yourself. So there is a tutorial on CKP web. Right when you open CKP web, there's a tutorial okay. on user corpora, if it is less than 3 million. But if it is more than 30 million, then you can uh, contact us. Uh, we can help you index that corpus to CKP web. And then you can give the access open to everyone, or you can also limit the access to certain users. OK, OK, that's mm -hmm. good. So uh, I will, I will, I will uh, look at the tutorial uh, i'm not sure, sure whether i will be able to do that because they are no, no, it's it's very easy is very easy but very, i know that uh, that text should be uh, you see it should be the txt form right yeah it should be in txt yeah okay so yeah i'll try but if i can then i'll contact you okay no worries yeah okay thank you very much no worries Okay. Um, sorry, I'm afraid I went too fast, but any other question? So maybe if you have any difficulties uh, during the session, maybe you can share your screen and Andres, I can, can help you. Yeah, that would, that would be useful. Call. So that, that will do. So it's not always us sharing the screen. You can also share your screen so we can uh, uh happy with the problems yeah yeah pre what do you think we we could do this now we just leave all this um yeah everybody try the with the links and the yeah, so, the df and yeah, then i'm no here to so if you have any questions yeah. i'll just reply you can also you can feel uh, feel free to share your screen if you have any problem if you just if you're curious about how to upload your corpus to ctp web so maybe we can help you with that. Yeah. You can share your screen, we can guide you. Anybody wants to share your screen? Um, yeah. I think Jenny wants to know how to upload the corpus. Um, yeah. so... I think you're more familiar with that because I just know how to upload from <laughs> the, <laughs> from, I never used it as an external user. Mm. Okay, Jenny, if you can hear me, you can share your screen and I can guide you from here. It's very easy. So I'm just going to turn off my camera just for, but, but I'm still here. <laughs> sure, no worries. Yeah. yeah. It's not a problem at all, Ms. Dr. Andresa. Thank you. Okay, Jenny, you have stopped screen sharing. I haven't seen anything. It's still uh, black. So there's some sort of delay. Yeah, Mr. Piantora, I think it's still mm. like you on my mm, screen. Yeah. Okay, so maybe we share the screen. Uh, something wrong, my system, something wrong. Okay, try again. Okay, we will wait for a moment. E okay. Uh, I want to know uh, where can I upload my corpus? Okay, right. So from here, can you scroll up and then uh, go to your user account details? Uh, 
on this page. Okay, scroll up, scroll up. Scroll up. Up, 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 up. Up. Uh, yes. Okay, stay there. Now, okay. can you see your user account details? It's under quick links. Uh, yes, below this. That. Okay. Yes, exactly. Okay. And right. Okay, good. So now, everyone, so this is called the CKP Web user page. Okay. So page it has your username, email address. Of, well, this time you're still using the scoring account. And I need to remind it's... you that because you're using the shared account, there might be some issue if. Uh, everyone is uploading the corpus at the same time. So we are going to demonstrate this now. I will really need everyone uh, except uh, who is speaking here. Jenny? Yeah, uh, Jenny? Hello, I'm here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Jenny will be the only one uploading the um, the uh, the corpus. So uh, everybody else, you can just wait unless you have your own CKP web account. Okay. Okay, Jenny. Uh from here, uh, no. yes, okay, from here, uh, go to manage your files on the left. Can you see a menu Man on the left? Uh, it says manage your files. Oh, I yes. find it. Exactly, okay. Oh, yeah. uh, okay, Up this is in file. Chinese. Uh, no, it you need to choose the file first. Uh, is it in oh. <laughs> Sorry, I need to find the equivalent in English. So let me find. <laughs> You're using the Chinese version of CKP Web. <laughs> Upload file, you mean, right? <laughs> Sorry for that. Check from mine, manage your files, use the English version. Yes, choose file. Does that mean choose file yeah, yeah. in English? Yeah, yeah, that yes. means choose file. <laughs> so everyone, <laughs> Chinese in Mandarin, <laughs> this means choose file. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. click on that. Oh, I'll get back to the uh, questions on the chat later after this. So worry not, I'll stay here until uh, the session. Yeah, ends. I have okay. some test. Right, so try to find some text txt uh, document some dot txt document you usually uh, create it it's using a notepad do not choose dot, some... uh, dot doc do not use pdf but dot txt uh, is it okay My yeah text. just choose one of them yeah just one uh any anything mm -hmm. any of them right okay now uh, I assume that so if you go down open uh, open yes yes sorry oh there's a Mandarin yeah. Yeah, there's <laughs> okay <laughs> now upload yeah, file good. upload file upload file oh I see yes Here. okay now so can you see that you have your file in the system now. Uh, right. So initially it was yeah. in your hard disk and now it is in CKP web system. It is in your account. Well, our account because this is a certain account yeah. for course, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. The next step okay. is to install the corpus. Okay. Now you Inst click on the left menu, click install a new corpus. Mm -hmm. On the left. Left under your files and corpora, install a new corpus. No, go up, up. Uh, up. you install. No, install a new corpus. Yes, up. that one. Okay, now, uh, is the content of the language, uh, what 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 language is in the corpus? Is it Mandarin Chinese or I don't know, Cantonese, English or, or what? Uh you mean the language in my text, yeah. right? Yes. Yes, uh, exactly. I forgot. 
<laughs> I forgot. I mean, <laughs> Maybe try. I mean, try to, okay, try open to, Windows Explorer sorry. and try open that. <laughs> Let me check again. Okay, sorry. Uh, no worries. Uh, English, yeah. English. English, okay. Yes. Okay, now uh, go back to CKP web tab. Oh. Menu. Yes, okay. Um, right, scroll down until you find insert call base O oh, with three tag English. You can use clause, but yeah. Okay, right there. This Install call base yeah. with three tiger English. Select. Select. Yeah. Click select. Okay. Scroll down. Hey, it has no reaction. Yeah, yeah, no, no. It, it's it's good. You're good. Okay. No. The the color has changed, so that means uh -huh. it's been selected. Oh, okay. Scroll yeah. Scroll down. Scroll down. Yes. Scroll down. Now, uh, tick under include. Um, include. Uh, it's on the left. On the left. This up, one. No, no. Up. Oh. Up next uh, on the left side of your file name. Can you see file name? This. Yes. This that one. one. Take that. Yes. And then. Uh, specify a title for your corpus, write the title. Okay. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, that one. Uh, write, write a name, name, right? Of your corpus, any name. I'm calling English. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now select the language used in your corpus. If it is English, then choose English. Okay, click on mm -hmm. that. Choose English. Yes. Yeah, choose English. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay, done. Right, choose the color. Now it's blue. If you want to change the color, oh. yeah, you can choose from the existing <laughs> color scheme in CKP oh. web. Yeah, yeah. Purple, brown, up to you. Purple. Okay. It's up to you. Yes, purple. <laughs> okay. Now, install corpus with the setting is about. Setting. Where's setting? Run corpus installer. Yeah, install corpus with the, with the settings about. Setting That's right. love. Okay. Close. Wow. Yeah, just closed. And then, mm -hmm. okay, go up. Uh, oh, it's, it's already done. It's ready to use. Can you see Hong Kong English? Yes. yes. Here. Click that. Oh. Yeah. Click this it. is my search page, right? Click. Yeah. yeah. Now type anything. Maybe the, any word in the call yeah. I can search now, right? No, no, no. You need yeah. to input your query uh -huh. first. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's I a delay. Yeah, yeah, yeah I put it delay. Delay. Yeah. Right. Um, start yeah, query. Yeah. There you go. So if you have multiple files, you need to upload all of them to the system first and then include all of them mm -hmm. when you are about to index the call. Yes, yes. Thank you. So thank you. I have no... I can't hear you. Uh, Hi, Jenny. I, yeah, so I can't hear that, you that's now. Actually it. Yeah, that, that's actually it. So that's how to upload your corpus. And maybe so everyone can, who's we can We can all, we can do the do, uh, do this um, with any language, right? Any uh, language corpus? So well, basically, you can do this in, with any language. Okay, but the one that I demonstrated with Jenny uh, was yeah. more English. Okay, yeah. so I can quickly show you. I'm going to share my screen, actually. Um, bear with me. Thank you. That's so helpful. 
No just worries. Just so patient. That's interesting <laughs> no too. No worries. Yeah. Okay. So are you seeing my screen, everyone? Yep. Right. So what happened with Jenny? So we see here, install a new corpus. Uh, the display is a little bit different with what you saw in Jenny's screen because perhaps because my screen is a little bit larger. So this is actually the annotator or the tagger for Pacific language. So if you cannot find your language here, let's say you want to install uh, Bangla corpus. We don't have Bangla tagger here, okay? So we have tagger for Mandarin Chinese, we have tagger for Polish, Russian, Spanish, Slovak, even Swahili, but we don't have a tagger for many different languages. So let's say you want to install a corpus of Bangla, uh, whose installer is not available, then you can choose here. Install corpus without any tags. So that means okay. install corpus in any language. See like this and do the okay. same process. Okay, thank you. No worries. Right, Andresa, are you still there? <laughs> okay, while we're waiting for Dr. Andresa Gumide, I'm going to have a look at the uh, chat. Uh, Dr. Prehantoro? Oh, yes. I, I have a question. Uh, it's Raihana. Oh, okay, uh, so I'm wondering if, for example, we uh, notice some mistakes in the mm -hmm. tagging then. Mm -hmm. So can we correct it manually or how? Yeah. Um, if you see the mistake in the tagging, yeah. I suggest that you download the corpus. Mm -hmm. So you download the corpus and then you identify the location of the errors, mm -hmm. fix that, and then you upload to uh to CQB web. I see. But it's going to be a different process. You have to send it to uh CQB web admins. Mm -hmm. Because if you use the same method and then it's going to use the same tagger mm -hmm. and then the same mistake will be repeated. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. All right. Okay, yeah. thank you. No worries. Right. Uh, let me go through the chat box. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, from Asma. Yeah, this is directed to me. Do you have any idea about available access by spoken learner corpora? Need to compare my data with other reference spoken learner uh, corpus. So Asma, are you still here? Hi, yes, I'm here. Yeah. Asma, uh, yeah. what's the language of the data in your corpus? English. It's English, English. language. Okay. However, the okay. context is EFL, so I cannot like compare my uh, my data to another native speakers like BNC. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to reshare my screen. Perfect. Thanks. So that you can say. Um, so Andres and I, for your information, are CQO admins. So if you have any issue with sick web, you can uh, contact me or Andresa or Andrew. Uh, he's the <laughs> boss. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, if you go to sick web menu, mm -hmm. find Ignali. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so there are several uh, Ignali corpora, written, mm -hmm. edited, spoken. So we have two spoken corpora, mm -hmm. spoken dialogue and spoken monologue. So these are two uh, spoken English corpora, learner, English learner corpora that you can it's use. It's academic discourse, yeah? Yeah, it's academic. Perfect. Um, so if you see the metadata, uh, metadata, if you go to restricted query, mm -hmm. uh, you can have this information like CEFR level, age, oh, yeah. uh, country in which the data was obtained, like mm -hmm. China, this is Hong Kong, Indonesia, Japan, Korea, Pakistan, uh, PHL, Philippines, I think, Singapore, Thailand, and Taiwan. Perfect. Yeah, so I'm quite familiar with this because I have collected the data for uh, Indonesian and I indexed this corpus in, in CQP web. 
uh, degree, major, sex, male and female. So these are some uh, independent, some variables that you can use. Right. ENS type, either they are from students, teachers. Yeah. Amazing. So there are a lot of information that uh, you can use in this courses. So, so mine either. was collected in Algeria. So it's Algeria. like okay. EFL, yeah, Algeria. Mm. So I yeah. couldn't find accessible, well, there is, but I I'm looking, you know, for other options as well that I have. Mm. Yeah. Sure. Sure. yeah. Mm. Well, let me check if you have other spoken corpora obtained from learners of English. Mm -hmm. Learner, because yeah, I think we have only we have Longman Learner Corpus, but I'm not really sure whether it is spoken or written here. I have yeah. like both written and spoken. Okay, oh, I'm yeah. more yeah. concerned That's because good. I found a lot of like available written corpora, mm -hmm. but in relation to the spoken one, I want to find like a good reference and reliable one that I can compare the frequency list to my own. Yes. Mm. Okay, yeah. So you can access uh, spoken corpora from Ignali using CKP Web, or you can access Ignali corpus from its original website so here. You can even download the data, okay? Amazing. Great. including the, the audio file. So if you oh. want to, let's say you're doing a phonetic research okay, yeah. uh, on the accuracy of, of the transcription of the accuracy of the pronunciation, you can use this audio data. Perfect. Great. It even has video data. But this mm -hmm. one is for the dialogue. Okay, For audio data, it's just for mm -hmm. monologue. For dialogue, you can see the video. So it's like a multi-model. To... Yes, it's multi-model. I'm going to paste this onto our chat box. Uh, bear with me. Thanks. So Asma, you're from Algeria. Yes, I'm from Algeria and I'm oh, conducting okay. my PhD at the University of Limerick in Ireland. Oh, so I'm Limerick. based okay. in Ireland yeah. now, yeah. So I'm using yeah. Sketch Engine originally mm. for, my, um, for my research. However, I built my own corpus and, um, you know, the ones available, already accessible and available corpora on Sketch Engine um, cannot be compared to my own because my supervisor advised that since you have EFL, you know, context, so it would be more reliable to uh, look at another EFL or learner corpora that is in another ESL or EFL context, such as maybe um, Indonesia or China. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you very much. That was no very worries. helpful. Thank you very much no for worries. the session You're as welcome. well and answering our queries. That was amazing. Thank you very much. No worries, yeah. Right, so let me check on the chat box. Prihanto, I have a yes. question. Sure. Yeah, my question is that um, my corpus is actually in English, the but mm -hmm. it's all our literary texts, and okay. uh, I think I think you know about post-colonial Englishes. So mm -hmm. these are actually diaspora novels written by diaspora writers, and mm -hmm. the texts are um, not in the standard uh, English language. The writers have been used um, a lot of Bangla word into the English mm. texts and okay. even many South Asian languages, even uh, the sentence structures are mm. not exactly like the standard English or what we call the British English, right? Okay. So uh, uh, how can I, if I upload, I built my, um, actually I have, I have used the already, um, uh, made the novels into TXT file, converted the mm -hmm. novel to TXT file in the University mm -hmm. of Queensland using the digital digital you see, uh, means. But if I upload this um, uh, in in this CPQ website as yeah, a yes, yes corpora cor, uh, corpora, mm -hmm. uh, 
is it possible for me to compare with what is the best resources with which I can compare my corpora to understand the linguistic changes from the British standard to the post-colonial Englishes? Do, do, you, do, you, do, you, do you understand what, so what's the best way to compare? So do you have any idea who, with which corpora I can compare with my corpora? <laughs> Right. So let, okay. let me try yeah, to digest getting... your question. So <laughs> you have a number of texts and the content was from the post-colonial English uh, yes. used in, in Bangladesh. So yes. there are some code mixing uh, using of local language together with English, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you want to compare this. Uh, I think first... Uh, you need to define the reference corpus if you want if comparison is is uh is important for you. Do you want to compare this to British English or American English? Uh, I want so to compare with the yeah British English because of the colonial history of mm -hmm. South Asia. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we have a number of British English corpus here. So I suggest that you uh, check the metadata of each corpus. You find out more information about the corpus. So one very popular corpus of British English is the British National Corpus here. Okay. It's 100 okay. million. And then mm -hmm. uh, you have also historical English here. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So English okay. used in the past. Okay. okay. And then uh, let me check. So here, are you seeing, uh, am I still sharing my screen? Can you see the screen that I'm sharing? Yeah, yep, 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 I can see that. So here, I'm pointing at times online from 1780s. Okay. So the data in this corpus is collected from text published in 1780s, okay? And there okay. are so many corpora okay. here from different years of collection. So mm. maybe if you want to compare uh, the, 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 the post-colonial era, I'm not really sorry, is it in 19... Uh, something or uh, it's, it's after it's no no you know it's after 1947 after 1947 yeah 1947 so maybe you want to compare with 1940s or 1960s okay. mm. maybe and you want to see how okay. it progress so let's say you create a frequency list from your corpus and then you observe frequency list created from times online from 40s 60s until 90s or even 2000, and mm. you can compare how they differ. And then after that, you can check mm. on the concordance. Uh, we are going to discuss concordance and frequency list tomorrow, actually. So yeah, uh, I think Peter will be able to uh, answer your question uh, in more comprehensive yeah. <laughs> tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But as Robbie mentioned in, the, in day one, the most important is the research question. So where there are yeah. actually two ways. You can establish your research question first. Uh, so you have a clear direction. You know what you're doing, or you can do it injectively. You can just, just dive into the data and then, then define your own research question after that. So it can go okay. both ways. Yeah, mm. yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you no very worries. much for that. No that. worries. Okay. One question from in the chat. To Dr. Andresa and me, okay, I have a question determining the corpus tools and SOPs. Is it important to explain the justification for using a particular corpus tools? Why you seek me where, where you get it in? Uh, I use Ankong, but I haven't found any justification why I should use this corpus. Just any suggestion. Right, so I think I first would like to invite it Dr. Andresa. Andresa, are you still there? Oh, yeah. Could you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing you. Yeah, my name is Jiang Yun. I'm from okay, China. Yeah. Could you hear me? Hello, Jiang Yun. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, can hear I you. Have a, yeah, I have a question. Uh, since I'm doing the uh, research on the book evaluation, textbook evaluation, in terms of critical thinking skills uh, teaching, so mm -hmm. I'm wondering if, if there are any corpus that I can use to evaluate the test books and based on the critical thinking skills? Well, I think you first need to define 
what critical thinking skill is. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, yeah, yeah you uh, can search the corpus, which one fits your purpose. So where can I search such kind of corpus? Can I okay. use the, the corpus just now you give us? Okay, so if you go through the corpus, so I'm going to give you one example. Um, mm -hmm. Let me see, uh, bear with me. I'll say, say, okay, bear with me. I'll say, say, right. So, Especially the test books. Yes, uh, this is a little bit different from what you're saying because I'm in the admin mode. Uh, but what you can do is try to find the information about the corpus from Corpus Manual, okay? Corpus Manual, okay. Corpus Manual. So this is the uh, manual or the information or the documentation about the corpus that I just opened, okay? Mm -hmm. This is LCC Indonesia. So maybe you can browse the uh, opera in CKP web and see which one fits your uh, research questions or research objectives. You can also click uh, on the focus metadata. So this is the kind of summary of the information. So for instance, what kind of annotation in the corpus, uh, uh, the size of the corpus here, it says the corpus size is 573 million. Uh, we have a little bit of statistical information here, a type token ratio uh, per uh, 100 token basis and non-standardized mm -hmm. type token ratio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so these are the information that you can study. And then after that, you can uh, define by yourself whether or not the corpus will help you. Mm -hmm. Got it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No worries. Yeah, no worries. You're welcome. Right. Okay, Andresa, are you here? So it seems that we have a uh, technical difficulty with Dr. Andresa. So I'll try to uh, connect. While waiting for Dr. Andresa to get connected, I'm going to try to answer Taat, yeah, Taat Budionos question. The justification of the, the particular tools. Um, yes, uh, I think it's quite important to argue why we choose a certain corpus, uh, corpus tool, whether we use MCONG, whether we use uh, Langsbox or CKP Web or Sketch Engine. For instance, um, are we using web application tools or are we using standalone application? Okay, because if you use web alone tools, I think it's going to be easier uh, if you want to share the, the corpus. So you can just give the, 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 the address, the website of the corpus that you, uh, that you upload to CKP web. And then people can just use CKP functionalities to browse the corpus. Uh, imagine when you use Ancon. Um, people who are not familiar to ANCOG, they will have to learn how to index the corpus. You can send them the, the text using emails. You can put the text on a Google Drive and people can download it. But imagine the complexities that they have to go through just to index the corpus, not let alone how to analyze the corpus. So that's one thing that you want to consider. That's the argument from the access perspective. Okay, but maybe in some cases, uh, NCONC is more useful, okay, uh, because you're sharing the corpus to fellow NCONC users. So in that way, it's not going to be an issue. So yeah, that's from the access. Um, another thing that we usually consider is the tagging software. So CKB Web, is a tool for indexing your corpus and the function or the availability of the tagger just came recently. I think it's less than one. Okay. So you can upload your raw corpus to CKP Web and CKP Web will tag them. Yeah. 
if the language is supported in Sikibib, like for instance, English, Indonesian, uh, Mandarin, Chinese. So it can help you tag the corpus. When your corpus is tagged, it's going to have uh, additional information like part of speech or lemma. Uh, so my understanding, Hancock does not have that functionality. Okay, Langsbox do does have that functionality. So even if you're using standalone application, you can still argue. Let's say I choose Langsbox of And Kong because it has a checker function. Well, actually, so that can be an argument. Okay. So I use Ankong because it can run on almost every computer, even with low specification. Imagine that you have to, <clears throat> you need to have a very sophisticated uh, computer just to run a tool. Okay. Right. So I'm blabbering here, I think. So I hope that answered your question. But Are you, are you here? Oh, I think there is a bad connection with him. Or you can respond in the room chat, please, Pat. Thank you for the response. I guess if you want uh all the, for the, all the delegates, you can um you can fill the attendance list on the room chat, please. So yeah. Wait a second. For all the participants, don't forget to fill the links for our list attendance on the room chat. Oh yeah, thank you Trisna Jilahai for us, us. And we want to wait a moment for Papri, I think Papri has a bad connection. Also, if you guys still don't understand about this, you can also ask on the room chat, please, or open your mic. Okay. You guys still here? Asma? Asma, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, um, uh, I'm just curious about this event. So the day two is a little bit panic because there is uh, some issues for the internet connection. So uh, what, about, uh, what about this event? I want to know. What do you think about this event, mm -hmm. day two? about the corpus linguistic oh website. yeah okay so it was amazing actually it was very informative uh andresa and both dr um penary like they were very helpful in um providing us with some insight into how to do some queries which was very helpful so thank you very much for the great session it was very informative thank you looking forward to tomorrow's session and other sessions as well Wow, that's very insightful, yeah. Uh, I'm great to hear you say that. Okay, I think Dr. Uh, Mr. Prihantoro was in here. So, Mr. Prihantoro, can you hear me? Okay, yeah, you can. There is uh, someone uh, asked on the chat box. So, if you don't mind, can you answer? Yeah. Okay, um, I'm reading the question right now. Uh, so, 
sentence list. Um, okay, this one is from Kusrisna. Yeah? If we upload our own corpus to secure, is it already in TXT file? Uh, it has to be in TXT file because that's the uh, document format that Sigby Web uh, can read. So if you upload in JPEG or DocX or Microsoft Word, uh, Sigby Web will not be able to read that. So if you have files in DocX, uh, you can convert that. It's it's quite easy. So there's a lot of online converter available uh, on the internet. So let me try. So let's say docx2txt. Am I still sharing my screen? Yes, you can yeah. see your screen. Yeah, so you have a lot of uh, um, converter here that which you can use. So just convert those files to .txt format and then upload to CQB web. Yeah, I hope that answers your questions. Feel free to open your mic if there's still anything that you want to discuss. Okay, but another question, but Andre. Yes, go ahead. Uh, you said that uh, Hong Kong cannot do tagging, but uh, mm. Lexbox or CQP web uh, can. Yes. So. Uh, one of the method that I'm going I'm going to use for my analysis is uh, systemic functional linguistics. So okay. later uh, I'm going to look at the clause consisting the words like uh, right. what uh, Andresa uh, showed mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. So I need I need the tagging because I have to find out the uh, the transitivity normalization okay. and so on. So okay. I guess. I have to do it with Langsbox or CQP Web. Okay. So the thing is with Langsbox or CQP Web because it does not have the, the, the scheme for applying transitivity analysis. So I suggest that if you want to uh, apply transitivity analysis scheme, then you use this software, UM Corpus Tools. I'm going to share oh, the yeah. website address here. Um, with me UAM yeah UAM sorry I seem to have problem with my mouse not really familiar with touchpad okay uh so so this is the web page of UM so there are two options here you can use the online version Mm -hmm. Or you can download uh, and install this to your computer. Okay? The desktop version, yeah? Yeah, so that's the version. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use my account. Right, so I'm in. So let's start with this. Let me name the project Srisna, okay? Yeah. Okay, Srisna, so here. Wait. Okay, so you can add files to your corpus, or you can just blah 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 write something here. So let me maybe find something online, some news, just to show that we can um index your corpus. So this is a very very little data. Okay, uh, let's name this. This now try languages English. Okay, right. So your corpus is already indexed, but it's not yet annotated. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can go to layer. So files, next to files, you see this tab, layers. Mm -hmm. Then add new layer mm -hmm. and choose automatic or manual. Now, the question is are you going to call this manually or automatically? Which one is your preference? Uh, 
can okay, say, uh, these two use <laughs> with, much, uh, let's say use automatic with, yeah can we use it with indonesian language pa? okay but because because so my let, data let, is is in, in indonesian okay let me check um i think it does not yet support indonesian ah i see so yeah. manual annotation then yeah yeah but yeah, automatic layer, grammar, you have this SFL transitivity. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's give the name mm -hmm. transitivity. And this is the scheme. Yeah. Uh, grammatical, participant, process, material, mental, yeah. verbal. Uh, so I think there was one question from one of, part, one of the participants about cognitive mm -hmm. verbs. So yes. I think this scheme can help you, yeah, yeah. even though it is not entirely identical, perhaps, to yeah. the, the thing that you're expecting. Yeah, mm -hmm. the problem is that I have never tried this on Indonesian data. Mm, and I to my knowledge, it does not apply to Indonesian. It only applies to English. But maybe you can try English. and see whether uh, it works. Ah, uh, <laughs> okay. okay. To my knowledge, only English for now. Uh -huh. Or you can contact okay. Uh, Mike O'Donnell. So Mike O'Donnell is the author of this software. You can ask him uh, mm -hmm. or you can help him developing uh, annotation schemes and annotator mm -hmm. for uh, Indonesian language as for the mm -hmm. transitivity scheme. Mm -hmm. That okay. can be a PhD project, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you, Pa. So no if, worries. Yeah. So if I use the, you know, my data in Bahasa Indonesia, yeah. uh, have to use manual annotation then. Yes. So you go back to uh, here. Yeah. And then the, start the project. Yeah. Uh -huh. so L, manual. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. And then you choose. Uh, we still need to add file. Yeah. Okay. And on layers here, mm -hmm. you add layer, manual annotation, mm -hmm. and you can choose. You want yeah. to design or you use built-in scheme. Because some of uh -huh. my students uh, uh, study using SFL annotation, but they said the annotation scheme in UM, particularly for SFL, is a little bit different. Okay, So if you want, you can design your own uh, scheme. Ah, but you can use the built-in scheme, of course. Let's say okay. operational analysis or yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you very much, Pat. No worries, no worries. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, question from yeah. Let me go for the chat. If I have stored my copies on my computer, question from Nugraha Ningtias. Can I just upload the text file to you? And oh yeah, sure. Yeah, you can. But first, you need to create an account first. So let me log out. Yeah, Nukuraha Ningtias, I hope you're still here. So you can just uh, register here, email address, and then uh, password, and then create an account. It's very easy. Yeah. Alternatively, you can also, um, yes, you're following. Thank you. Alternatively, you can download the tool. It's very similar. It depends on the system that you're using. Are you using Windows or Mac? Yeah, let's say I'm using Windows and then just download and then like when you're um, installing other applications. Yeah. Let me see if I have UM on my computer. No, I don't have that. I think it's on my other computers at home. So this is the office computer. Yeah, so the short question, the short answer is yes, yes, you can. Okay, you're welcome, yes. Okay. Does anyone else have any other questions? So we are still trying to establish connection uh, with Dr. Andresa. Well, hopefully, uh, she will be here shortly. So in the meantime, let me look over the chat.
Am I audible, right? Yes, you are audible. Oh, thank you very much. Okay. Oh, this is so insightful about the website, about the computations in linguistics. So we still have some issues with Dr. Anurisa Gomide. We still wait for her. Are you guys uh, have list attendance, have list attendance on the chat book? What about Ume Salma? Are you there? Hello, Ume Salma? Yep. Do you have um for list of from on the chat box attendance? Sorry. Do you have filled attendance list on the chat box? No, 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 not yet. But oh, I did it should... yesterday, but not now. Oh, yeah. We have shared the list of the attendance, so you can... From... Today? 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 Yeah, yes, yeah, today. So, I think we can share on the chat box again. Wait a minute. I filled it yesterday. Yeah. I think for the day two is you should fill the form again. So again, we can share. Okay. Yeah. Wait. And Ume Salma, where are you from anyway? Sorry? Where are you from? I'm in Australia. Oh, you're in Australia? Yeah. So is this just English with it connected with English languages for the native speakers. So what do you think about this topic in the day two? For the corpus <laughs> linguistic. Are you talking about my impression of today's um, yeah, yeah. program, yeah, today's uh, lecture? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. good. It was helpful for me because I asked two questions mm -hmm. and I got answer from Prihanto very well. And I think it will be helpful for my postdoctoral research because I have already completed my PhD from the University of Queensland. And I am working with uh, Peter Crosswell in the School of Language Culture. So yeah, I'm mm -hmm. thinking about my future research. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I think, I think, uh, me, I think, um, this is a great for connect the linguistic with AI too, because there is so insightful languages that we can learn about. Also, if you are one connected with us with deep scoring, you can also following the Twitter on Instagram, and you can also upload it this uh screen share screen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. done that in this list thank you very yeah. much Ms. thank you thanks very much for this nice arrangement yeah sure <laughs> yeah yeah thanks the organizer and everyone okay Hello. No. Uh, guys, unfortunately, uh, Dr. Andresa is not here. So I think there is a connect, a uh, bad connection with her. So uh, you guys can open the camera for the last sessions in the day two. We can screenshot and Take a picture together in here. Okay, guys, open the camera, please. Yeah. Dr. Mian Bacha, are you are you after wake up? 
no, 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 actually, I'm I'm awake, but I just I so seriously oh, just heard. I mean, okay. yeah, yeah. So That's I, good. I was just <laughs> reclining, reclining towards the sofa. Oh yeah, it's good. Okay, everyone can open the camera, please. To take a picture together in this one. Okay, I think we can take a picture now. So everyone, I will start in one, two, three. Okay, slides two, one, two, three. Yeah. That's good at all. Yeah, you can turn off your camera and thank you for today. This is a great session. And also everyone, if you have contrast and frequency uh, for the list which you be broke today, um, you can also ask on the room chat, please. And thank you for the participating today. See you next day. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye-bye.